Hello there. This is a build guide for my Soul Thirst Juggernaut build in the Incursion Flashback League, although I've made a few builds uh, like this since Brandis. The build totally centers around the Soul Thirst Belt, which grants you Soul Eater while you have a flask active. It is a very fast melee build, uh, able to keep up with the fastest builds in the game. So the limitation of clear speed on this build isn't the build itself, it's how well you can play it. Now the playstyle is not for everybody, so I'm going to show gameplay first. I'll hop into this uh, shaped gorge map and you can see what the build looks like in action. It's a bit intense to play, so uh, I'm not going to talk too much for the next 40 seconds or so. So that's what the build looks like. Um, there are a few ways to build around Soul Thirst. I'm just going to show you the way I've done it. So Soul Thirst is a build that uh, gives you Soul Eater while you have a flask up. Now Soul Eater is a buff that grants you 5% increased attack speed and 5% increased attack and cast speed for each enemy you kill uh, in a radius of about 60 around your character while the buff is active. So to maximize this belt, you want the longest flask possible so that you can have the longest soul leader possible. Because the longer a soul leader goes on, the more souls you get, the faster you get. So like the last 10 seconds of soul leader are the very best part of the buff. And you want to make those 10 seconds last as long as possible. So this build uses a saturated, sanctified mana flask, which as you can see, lasts for 20 seconds baseline. So whenever I pop this flask, I get 20 seconds of Soul Eater. But uh, we don't stop there. We curse ourselves with temporal chains using Shackles of the Wretched. Um, we have Leap Slam, Curse on Hit, Temp Chains, and then Faster Attacks. And we stack a bunch of Curse Effect so that this Temp Chains roughly doubles the length of our flask, which puts it up to 40 seconds of Soul Eater. Now, uh, Temp Chains also slows you down, of course, but we get around this by being a Juggernaut with the Unstoppable node. The cannot be slowed below base speed part of this node prevents uh, Temp Chains from having any effect besides the part where it makes our buffs uh, expire slower. <clears throat> so we're using a Mana Flask which means that we need to keep our mana low so it doesn't cap out and end the flask early. But on the other hand, we also need to be able to actually use our skills, because if we're out of mana, you know, you can't do anything. So the way this build does it, uh, satisfy, we satisfy both conditions simultaneously using Soul Taker. So your melee attacks drain your mana, but if you're out of mana, you can still use melee attacks. And uh, I think this is the most straightforward way to build a Soul Thirst character. Although, as I said, there are other ways of doing it. Um, you don't have to be a Juggernaut. You can also use Cam's Roots, but I wanted to use Goldworm, so Jug was the choice. That covers the main interactions. Oh, you also, as I said, we want to increase the Temp Chain's Curse effect. Uh, so that we can lengthen the flask. So the other key piece of gear is you absolutely need a helm with the Temp Chain's Curse Effect enchant on it. But other than that, this build tries to be as normal of a build as possible while missing the glove, belt, boot, weapon slot. You know, it's like, uh, you kind of don't want to make any more sacrifices. You know, so you sacrifice all your flasks so that you can have a mana flask up all the time. So. Um, you know, it's uh, pretty normal Sunder gear, otherwise you've got, like, your amulet. Um, for the 
offhand, I chose a stat stick with the enemies killed explode, dealing 5% of their life as damage. This is really nice for killing crabs and things that do things after they die. Um, but you could just use a regular old stat stick with a bunch of fizz damage conversion on it. Uh, lore weave, of course, because it's the best melee chest. And then I use these other flasks. Um, you don't want to use them ever while you have Soul Eater, but sometimes you're against single targets with no enemies nearby. So then you can use your other flasks, or if you absolutely have to, you can pop your life flasks. Although, uh, usually I just, I just die instead. So, um, for the passive tree... Oh, the other critical piece of gear that I forgot to mention is the Fevered Mind Jewel, which increases your mana cost. So it's pretty important. Um, as you can see, my mana flask barely refills my mana while I'm leaf slamming. So if I get any souls, you know, it's enough to drain my mana. Um, and you really need Fevered Mind for that to work with this level of mana flask. As for the passive tree, it is a totally normal Sunder RT build um, as a juggernaut. Uh, the only deviations are that you take Skittering Runes to make your tent chains better, and then you take Druidic Rite to make your flask last longer. This node is extremely important because Soul Thirst actually decreases your flask duration, so you have to counteract that with Druidic Rite. But uh, other than that, tree is nothing fancy. Um, being a Juggernaut's kind of funny on a self temp chains build because we've got this node on flinching, gives you endurance charges whenever you get hit, and with a uh, with the level of curse effect on our temp chains that we have, a level one immortal call is uh, enough to have a five second immortal call, which means it's up all the time since the cooldown is only three seconds. So uh, that's a funny little interaction, but uh, this build is not tanky, so we take whatever defenses we can get. Um, I believe that covers everything. Um, as I said, this is a really fast melee build. It's pretty fun to play if you like going fast, but if you don't like going fast, then maybe pick a different build, I suppose. So, um, hope you enjoyed, and good luck!